Hello and welcome to Crafting with Ursa. I'm Ursa and today we're going to talk about a new flexible type of polymer clay called cost clay. So you're probably wondering where I acquired this cost clay. I got it by participating in their Kickstarter campaign. I'm thinking about sculpting something very delicate because I want to push the boundaries with this clay. I think I'll make an orchid headband. If you're sculpting along with me, your flower doesn't necessarily have to be a headband. You can apply this tutorial to any type of craft you like. This clay is really firm. I mean, really firm. So I'm gonna have to run it through my pasta machine a couple times to get it to be really nice and soft. And I'm running the clay through the medium setting of my pasta machine. Now that it's all rolled out, I'm gonna take this potter's needle, I, I call it a pokey, and I'm going to start cutting out the petals. Poking out the petals with my pokey. And orchids usually have a middle petal in the back and that's what I'm cutting out right now. It's gonna go in the back like so and I'm going to cut out two little back petals. Now if you want to be really precise you can do what I did and just lay one piece on top of the other so that they're identical. And I'm going to clean it up with my pokey. Now I'm sculpting out what I believe is called the anther cap. And I'm gonna push out two little petals that are gonna go in the front. Like I said before, this clay is really firm, but as I'm working with it, I'm beginning to realize that's not necessarily a bad thing. Here I'm using a large ball stylus to really get my clay as flat as possible. Um, I don't mind the firmness so much because it's going to really hold on to detail and as I'm sculpting I'm not going to smash or distort my piece like I would with a piece of super sculpty. Now I'm going to add a little twist to my orchid, uh, something a little macabre and I'm going to sculpt out an itty bitty little tiny skull. Here I'm using a color shaper to make the eye sockets. And I'm alternating between a ball shaper and a color shaper, ball stylus, I mean. I'm going to make the nasal bone right now with my color shaper. It's a small ball stylus I'm using to make the nasal bones. And this is where my teeth are going to go, that little piece that I just put on. I'm just marking out the teeth. I'm going to put some cheekbones.
my potter's needle to separate the teeth. I take my small ball stylus and add a little bit of details. Raise the forehead a little bit. Define the brow bone, and there he is. He's finished. My tiny skull. I'm rolling out a tongue for my skull. I'm going to flatten it out a bit. Use a color shaper, but first I'm going to put some clay softener onto my clay so that the clay shaper goes through cleaner. And I'm sculpting out the center of my tongue. Orchids have ridges on their petals. If you've ever looked in an orchid, you'll, you'll see the ridges. So I'm taking various ball styluses and I am sculpting out the ridges using a little bit of clay softener and I'm trying to get my petal to be as thin as possible. And I'm just gonna refine the back of the petal. I'm going to take some wire as a precaution and make a little armature for it. That way it keeps its shape because I'm not entirely sure that it can stand up by itself. So I'm going to wrap the clay around the wire until I get my desired shape. Put some more ridges on. Smooth out the back. And I'm going to repeat the process with the two larger petals. I'm adding some bacon bond and I'm sticking my back petal to the two front petals. I'm adding more wires to the front petals for stability and I want them to curve a little bit. Give them a little bit more shape. Bond my pieces together with a little bacon bond. And I'm going to start assembling my little skull pieces together. My skull, the tongue. And I'm going to put the two little petals that are going to frame the skull. Make sure that you really bond the pieces together very well. And this is what the uncured clay looks like. One more finishing touch. And that's the finished piece. I need to cover up those wires. So I'm going to put this in the pasta machine Put some bacon bond on the back and stick it to the back of my flower. the finished orchid. Now I just baked this uh, flower. In my hand here, that little piece is what the uncured clay looks like. And look at that. It's so flexible and I'm not even afraid to touch it. Everything flexes beautifully. It's bond together well. And I'm not afraid of it breaking. 
I'm really, really impressed with how much detail the piece has after being fired. You'll see when the light shifts, you'll see that all my ridges are there. It looks amazing. Now it's time to paint our little orchid. I'm using folk art matte acrylics. Uh, I'm using warm white on a makeup sponge. Uh, makeup sponges don't have huge holes in them, so I can cheat a little bit and paint it a little bit quicker if I use the makeup sponge. You can also use a beauty blender if you want. Um, I just want a very smooth texture and I'm kind of pressed for time. I don't have the patience to wait. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this piece in white. For the skull, I'm using Martha Stewart Multi-Surface Glow-in-the-Dark Acrylic Paint. This paint is really transparent. I think the best measure to use it is to paint a white base coat underneath so that you can get the true neon yellow color. Now I'm going to attach my flower to this headband, but first I'm going to cut out a nice little felt backing. And I'm going to measure so it doesn't show through the other side. I'm cutting out sort of a teardrop shape. And I'm going to place it on the back of my flower. And the plan is to attach it like so. This skull could really use some shading. I'm going to take some really diluted brown acrylic paint and I'm going to shade the skull. Now first I'm going to shade the eyes in between the teeth and I'm using my makeup sponge again to sop up all the excess paint. This is going to add a lot of dimension to the skull. What's nice is you can wipe away whatever you don't need. Now it's time to paint the tongue. I'm using some cardinal red with a little bit of parchment and these are folk art matte acrylics. I'm using a fuchsia sharpie to add color variations to my petals. It's efficient and effective. Now let's add some subtle shading and dimension. I'm using a light lavender wash to shade the petals and define those ridges. Now let's glue our orchid to the headband. I'm using a hot glue gun to adhere the flower to the headband. You see that black hair tie? I'm using it to mark the placement of the flower so that I don't place it too high or too low on my headband. Now I'm gonna take out that piece of felt that we cut out earlier and I'm going to adhere it to the flower and the headband. 
that's going to hold everything in place nicely. Make sure to get all of the open spaces and the gaps and close them. I should have sculpted out a groove so that the orchid would fit snugly on the band. Let's see if we can fix it by adding some extra felt to the gap. So I'm just going to place my piece of felt where all the glue is and I'm going to cut it to size. There it is, my orchid. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more creepy crafts. Bye for now.